Welcome to my masterclass on Intelligent Automation, Service Robots and AI. I'm Jochen Wirtz, Vice Dean MBA Programs and Professor of Marketing at NUS Business School. Today I'm so excited to share a topic or a masterclass with you that I'm really passionate about. And why? Because what we're seeing now is what we saw in the late 18th century in the Industrial Revolution. We see the same now in the Service Revolution. And why now? Because everything is coming together now. Technology is developing at an incredible speed. It is becoming cheaper, better, smaller, faster and more powerful almost by the month. And what I'm talking about is RPA, machine learning, natural language, natural language processing, um, um, analytics, um, drones, voice recognition, biometrics, uh, autonomous cars, cloud technology, mobile, te mobile technology, geotagging, and you name it. It is all coming together. And I tell my children, I'm so excited for you guys because you, what you're going to see, what happens with our economies over the next 50 years will be an amazing journey. I mean, you just think back what happened in the Industrial Revolution. What we got was mass manufactured goods at high quality and low cost and that resulted in a dramatic increase of our standard of living. Before the Industrial Revolution, uh, maybe a lady bought one handbag in her life, had to save forever to buy it. Today, these goods are good quality uh, and, and you can buy almost as many as you want, at least in, 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 in uh, industrial, industrialized countries. Um, they have become common good almost. And what we are talking about now is the service sector where we have insatiable demand for services such as healthcare and education and leisure and tourism and so on. So this will be, again be a dr dramatic revolution that happens here. And at least the gents in the audience, I promise you in five years we go to a hairdresser and there will be a smart mirror and it will superimpose uh, whatever the, uh, can be done with our hair and our head shape and you swipe what you like and you click go and robots will cut our hair. So it will be what happened in, in the goods industry happens now in the service sector. So we had the agricultural revolution that gave us affordable food, we got, got the industrial revolution that got us affordable goods and now we have the service revolution that will do exactly the same thing for the service sector. Now let me first show you something why this is also so needed and these are some awful pictures. We hope we won't be seeing much in the future anymore. These photos were all taken by my co-authors who worked on massive digitization and automation projects in the service sector here in Asia. The first one, as you can see, these are queues at a bank at a railway station. And you can see that is bad service. Customers hate it. Who wants to work in a, in a queue? And at the same time, it is pretty expensive to deliver for the service organization to have expensive real estate and expensive people serving you here. The next one, don't laugh, but this is the back office of a very large MNC doing insurance processing. Can you imagine you work there? processing 400,000 invoices per annum. So my co-author, he worked on this project. Now it's only very few people working on this, only de dealing with exceptions, and the whole thing is fully automated. And I was alluding to this, the service revolution will not just help customers. It also will help, help staff because a lot of the really terrible jobs we have in the service sector, these are the first ones that are gonna be automated. And when we talk about intelligent automation, we don't just talk about AI or any particular um, uh, uh, um, technology here. What we have is four capabilities that work together. You need all four of them. The first one is vision. So you have to get stuff into your system. So this is character recognition, biometrics, right? Uh, so computer vision is very important. The next is execution, because if you want end-to-end -end fully automated customer service processes, what you need is also execution. I have to issue you a legally binding travel insurance. 
or I have to issue you a virtual credit card or a physical credit card. So that means there, have to, there has to be real execution of tasks and this is RPA, uh, smart workflows and all of that. The next is language. Your computer, your AI, your technology has to understand you, right? This is, this is natural language processing here. And the last one is thinking and learning. So this is all what you have in analytics, um, machine learning. And that's very needed in, in a service context too because you're constantly going to have new situations that have to somehow get automated and into the system. So we are not talking one technology here. We are talking an integration of a number of technologies that give us these highly scalable, low cost, high quality customer services. Now I want to focus a bit on what what are the dimensions that are important to allow a process be automated, a customer service process be automated? And there are really three key things. The first one, is it a tangible or intangible service task? So are you moving stuff, touching stuff, or is it mostly information processing and, and analytics and so on? The second is, is the core value or purpose of the service, is that cognitive analytical? Or is it social and, um, and emotional? And the last one dimension really is how often does it happen and then each time it happens how heterogeneous it is. And we will go through this briefly here. You will see then whether or not a service you are thinking about can, should be automated and how fast. So let me go to the first one here. This is really tangible and intangible. And you look at the public media and LinkedIn and Facebook and the post you see is very often Boston Dynamics with a running robot or with a dancing robot or a robot bringing uh, food uh, or baggage to your hotel room. Uh, so these are the very visible robots everyone is so excited about and they're going to come. But they're not really what's happening right now much faster. And this is all the intangible stuff. So anything that can be done in a call center, in face-to-face -face conversation, uh, on an app, on an ATM, um, on a website. So all these intangible kind of processes, these are the ones where, where it's the most rapid development of, of service automation here. And I mean, in the US currently, the fastest shrinking job category is retail assistance. There are two reasons. One is, of course, Amazon e-commerce. People don't go to the shop anymore. But the other reason is also, you know, it's an information type service. I mean, you go to a shop and you want to know, shall I buy this screen or that screen here? And so the shop assistant gives you information, uh, explains to you and discusses with you. But I don't know about you. If I don't know which one of these two to buy, I Google, I ask Mr. Google. So even though you still may go to a physical shop, the number of service staff you need is actually a lot lower. And so this is really where the revolution now is gathering space. And I promise you the, the next fastest shrinking job category will be call center agents. Because whatever you do on a call center, most of it by far can be automated. And let's face it, I mean, your customers don't want to talk to you and you don't want to talk to your customers because it's expensive. And when I say your customers don't want to talk to you, just think about it. People always tell me, so what about the personal touch? Are you going to miss the personal touch if everything is automated? I have people who are passionate about this and I just ask them, so you're so um, in love with the personal touch. It is so important to you. Tell me. When was the last time you went to human teller inside a branch and not to the ATM? You know what they say? Oh. <laughs> and why? Actually, you don't want the personal touch. You want cash fast and convenient. And an ATM is 24 by 7, many more locations. You don't have to queue. That is so much more important than the personal touch. And with the call center is the same. I mean, think about this. Do you ever say, oh, I'm so happy today, I get an opportunity to call my credit card company? 
who wants to call their credit card company? No one. Yes, you only want to call the credit card company when there's a problem. And actually, if you could do it on an app, you could do it on the website, you'd rather do this than automate, uh, than, than, than make this call, right? So uh, this will be really all automated very, very, very rapidly. And this is call center stuff here. But you even, let's say, in Singapore, we have Changi Airport. Changi Airport always tries to be one of the best airports in the world. But then headcount is expensive in Singapore. And you think about this, Changi Airport has a information counter in every terminal, every level. And that's expensive real estate, expensive headcount, and actually poor customer service because you're at one end of the terminal and you need information there but you have to go all the way to the center or there's no one in the car parks to help you yeah so i promise you in a few years from now there will be from the ceiling a, a, a holograph beamed down and all i need for this is, is a very low incremental cost i need a beamer a microphone a speaker and i'm in business the whole thing is connected via wi-fi and i can have one of these digital agents if you will a holograph every 50 meters and I can have them in different ethnic groups and genders and age categories. They can spend, because it's an AI, it speaks the 20 most common languages. So it can talk to you from Hindi to Chinese to, to Spanish to, to English. Yeah? And because incremental costs are so low, I can have one every 50 meters and I can even have one at the car park. You know? Um, and it's not that there's zero super human supervision. There will be, because all of these digital entities, agents, will be connected to a central control room where there will be one or two people. They monitor what's going on. And if there is a question the AI cannot answer, humans will take over and just respond through the AI. You wouldn't even know that there's a human uh, overflow, an expert uh, behind this. And with every question the AI can't answer and the humans take over, this is precisely what they will teach the AI to do in the future. So the beauty is much better service in all languages, everywhere, and no more headcount, no more floor space, and if it gets very crowded, you can even push through these holographs. Yeah? So you can see where we are going here with this. So this is the tangible, intangible, both are gonna be automated, but the intangible, intangible services, they're going to happen now and very, very fast, simply because the potential cost savings are unbelievable. You can have scaled services and customers appreciate it. Now, the second dimension really is what is the core purpose of the service? So is it cognitive analytical? I need some advice about currency exchange, or I need some information, or I need to make a restaurant reservation, or a doctor's reservation, or I have to cancel a reservation. Yeah? So any, though, any, any of those types of services, these are the ones that will be automated right now. Yes? And we as customers love it. And however, if the service becomes, um, if the emotional social part dominates in value creation for customers, so they come to you for that, then this will be where mostly humans will be serving customers. It's expensive, yes, but it creates a lot of value. And this could be anything from marriage counseling to PhD supervision or to a whitewater ad uh, rafting adventure uh, trip where you want to scream and shout with a person, not with a robot. So this is really the, the forte of human employees. Now, when it gets very complex emotionally and cognitively, that's the interesting part where we will be talking very much about human robot teams. And I give you one example. My daughter was in Singapore. We all had dengue fever, but she didn't. And then she moved back to Germany on, and then she came down with fever. So she went to her doctor and her doctor, she had never seen a dengue case in her entire life. I mean, why there is no dengue in, in Germany, right? So if my daughter hadn't prompted her, can we please test for dengue? My parents had dengue. I just came back from Singapore. I think it is dengue. Uh, this doctor would have never thought, oh, I need to test for dengue. But in the future, when medical practitioners, general practitioners have AI support, 
the AI will give you a hit list. Uh, they will be connected to the, to the data of the patient. They will observe what's going on at, at the clinic and the doctor will enter whatever data. This uh, Maybe it even will pick it up from language uh, recognition and processing here. And it will tell you a hit list. So the AI will tell the doctor a hit list of potential illnesses this patient can have. And if it shows 99.7% all the symptoms are consistent with dengue, then the doctor can prompt the patient, have you been in the tropics recently? Oh, I just came back from Singapore. Oh, in this case, let's do a test, a blood test for dengue. And I promise you in 10 years from now, if you're a doctor in America, and if you misdiagnose something, AI support would have never misdiagnosed, you can be sued for malpractice. So this is really where, where um, the teams come together. Now the third dimension is how often does it happen and each time it happens how heterogeneous is it. So for stuff that happens all the time and is each time almost the same, this will all be robots. I mean bringing baggage to a room in a hotel, bringing you room service in a hotel happens all the time. And this will be all robots. I mean, even today, the lift manufacturers have APIs in their lifts to allow direct interface with robots so that robots can take the lift. Yeah. Um, on the, so this will be all robots. Now, however, stuff that doesn't happen a lot and each time is something different, this will be humans again. So imagine you are the handyman in a hotel. You have to fix a carpet, a drawer, open a door, change a light bulb. For the foreseeable future, no robot will be able to do that. Okay, so this will still be people. Now, interesting is this in-between again, where we have people robot teams. And this will be like in manufacturing, jobs that don't happen so often, but let's say are very heavy lifting. They're hard work, they're unpleasant work, they're dangerous work. This is where it makes a lot of sense to also put robots to work here. And I think, I mean, Japan is probably the most uh, um, advanced economy in robot deployment. And you look at the hospitals, lifting patients from beds into wheelchairs and wheelchairs into bathtubs is very hefty living, literally. Yeah? So, so the nurses can't do it. So, I mean, in Japan, you have robots who assist nurses for this. So this happens. Now, I've explained this whole story here. Um, with what we call physical robots and, and tangible processes, but this also applies to intangible processes. This curve gets pushed down for intangible processes. Why? Imagine making a spa reservation in a particular hotel may only happen 10, 20 times a day. So it's not a lot and I don't need to put a physical robot there to do that. Rather, what happens is this is an information process and it may not happen a lot at an individual hotel, but let's say if I'm married or a core, I have thousands of hotels. And in every hotel it happens. So it makes perfect sense to develop an, a, a, an AI to do, let's say, spa reservations. And I roll it out system-wide and I allow, allow every spa to customize how many rooms do you have, how many slots, when do you open, when do you close, uh, allow your hotel logo, allow your spa logo to put in there. So it will be this kind of smart thinking on, of aggregating and then pushing modular solutions to the individual hotel. And so, that's the, uh, so if it's an information type process, the threshold when it makes sense to automate is even better. Now, what we are really excited about is not a little bit of automation. What I want is end-to-end -end automation of customer service processes. I want these processes to be completely scalable. And let me give you one example. This here is the fully end-to-end -end process of a loan customer acquisition all the way to dispersing the loan, no human has to touch this. The whole process is completely automated. I don't want to go through the details here, but you can see it's not one technology, it's many technologies. This whole thing has to has, have API with government agencies, with the police, you have to do a police record, you have to look at income tax and credit rating scores and all of those things. But this process is up and running in New Zealand. Yeah? 
So this is the future, fully scalable end-to-end -end processes. And what, you're sh what, be, what you should be looking at is here, when you think about customer service of the future, think of Google today. I mean, for Google, is, a, is outstanding service quality, right? We all love the search engine and Gmail, and for academics, you have um, a, a Google Scholar. And so there are so many services they have. For, for small companies, you, ha you have AdWords, so you can advertise on Google. Yeah? And it is all without any human touch. There's all s very smart self-service technology here. And I mean, I had many students from Google in my class. And I mean, it's, it's always an eye opener to chat with them and to learn from them. But to give you an example, how do you develop end to end fully automated processes? For Google, they have sort of three key principles. The first one is for a new service, is the addressable market 1 billion users and more? If not, they're not interested. Then it's the toothbrush test. Do these 1 billion users need that service? at least twice a day, like Search or Google Maps. And what you can see already is, look, if you have one billion users who use you twice a day, how much human customer service can you throw at that process? You can't, right? It has to be frictionless. It has to be fully automated. And that is the future. To me, one of the, uh, some of the examples, I mean, I like WISE. WISE is a UK fintech that also has a license, a banking license here in Singapore. It took me 40 seconds to set up my account. There's an API to SyncPass, which is sort of a government uh, uh, a key here, which uh, confirms my identity and pulls over all my data. In 40 seconds, I was up and running. And I, I'm, I'm a gifted in messing up technology. So I've been using Google, uh, Google um, Wise for a year and a half now. I never emailed to anyone from Wise. I never talked to anyone from Wise. And I could do everything I wanted to do on it, so I didn't mess it up. So it's completely frictionless. It is idiot-proof. And it's what I call customer error-proof. So that is really the future in customer service here. And to do that, you see already, if you want to make something error-proof, you have to start at the core, at the first design of the service, because you can't afford it to go wrong. You can't have failure in there. And for Google, they use the Swiss Army knife principle for that. One problem, one tool. So it's very different from Microsoft, where everything is interwoven. But if I have one problem and one tool, then my developers, developers can really work with this. And it's very simple for customers to use so they don't get stuck. So at Google, if you're a manager who wants to hire operational headcount to serve customers, forget about it. But if you want a few million dollars to perfect the self-service technology, you're in business. Okay, so I mean, end-to-end uh, -end automation is really the game. Now let me introduce you to a digital person. And this lady is called Jamie. And Jamie was launched three years ago by, at ANZ in, in New Zealand. And Jamie has been serving hundreds of thousands of customers since the introduction. And the company that developed Jamie is a company called Soul Machines. And they say we are in the digital people business. And you go to Soul Machines website or YouTube, you can actually custom design your digital people for your company. You can make them smile more, smile less, eye color, head shape, hair color, hair style, gender, ethnic group, everything you want. Pure skin, some skin problems, whatever you want. You can really design your digital person. So have a look at Jamie. So I introduce you to Jamie here first. I'm really pleased to have helped so many people, but I've only just started my banking journey. I still have so much to learn. We can't believe that it's been three months since we launched Jamie, and um, we're really pleased with how she's going. I think customers generally are loving her. She's had well over 12,000 customer conversations. Lots of people ask me how to open an account. She's an evolving piece of work, and so by putting her out into the world, we're able to find out how people are responding to her and what they think. 
and what they want from her. Hi Jamie, how can I get a new credit card? I can help you order a new credit card. As soon as the Jamie technology was available, there was an expectation that she would be able to answer real-time questions about most topics. And so we're actually doing a lot of work to build in the the ability for her to, to answer real-time things, such as what the effects rates are or interest rates. Yeah. This would work a lot um, more closely to the way people are actually asking us questions. Mm -hmm. I think what we're hearing from the public is we want her to be able to do our banking for us, we want her to be able to give us much more comprehensive answers. Thanks for asking. And for us, that's the exciting next step. <laughs> I need to open a new savings account. Uh, would you be able to help me with that? To make her much more helpful and much more knowledgeable about current banking information. Since launch, you've been available to customers 24 hours a day, seven days a week. How are you coping with the workload? It's nice of you to ask, but I'm a digital entity and I don't need to sleep. But sometimes, when no one is talking to me, I watch cat videos on YouTube. Don't tell ANZ I said that. Now you met Jamie and you met the future. Most standard transactions will be done through Jamie. Forget about us keying in questions into a chat. We will be talking to Jamie like we talk to Siri, but that digital person will be custom designed for your service company, understand all the terminology and policies and pricing and language of that company. So it will be really a custom service and, and a completely scalable service. Um, and this will dramatically cost, uh, cut the costs of serving customers. And we, are, we live in, most of us live in reasonably competitive market economies which means these cost savings over time will be competed away. And this is how we get these massive increases in standard of living we are looking for. And my co-authors and I, we wrote this book, Intelligent Automation, where these cases are from. Now I tell you a little, little secret here. You can go to my ResearchGate account and download a free copy if you like. Or you can go to Amazon and buy one in Kindle format and so on. Yeah? But uh, that really shows, this book gives you a very nice introduction on the future including also we paint scenarios for an optimistic scenario, a pessimistic scenario, what can happen to our societies when a lot of work, a lot of service work will be automated. We are in a business school and we don't do that much rah-rah. Most of the things we teach are really based on sound academic research and service robots, intelligent automation has been one of my passions and I published my first paper in 2018 on service robots which has been the fastest cited paper I ever published and since then we have done a lot of work. So when you go to a business school you don't on only learn the latest stuff, we also t learn from and with professors who actually do cutting edge academic research on the stuff you learn. With this, let me say thank you for being here in our masterclass and I wish you a wonderful day.